got the text here along YouTube. How the fuck you do? Wake up, bitch! <laughs> okay. Are you going or not? No, I'm still not doing more. Anyway, um, so over the weekend, uh, I was at PAX, these guys were home, and uh, collectively we decided to part ways with uh, Joey, Merck, DeLuca. Um, one of the toughest things that we've ever, I mean, it's, it's tough every single time that, that, we, that we part ways with people. Um, it's, it's never an easy thing, especially because, you know, us at, as Optic, we've become so, so closely ingrained with our fans that everybody's always going to have a problem when transitions like these happen. So uh, it, it's, it's a tough thing, and, and we all have, you know, something to say about it. Um, so I guess we'll start from my left to the right. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, obviously I've been teaming with Joey for, for the past three years, and I thought the easiest way to, to make you guys understand, because obviously you don't see a lot of behind-the-scenes the things, so this probably popped up. Out of nowhere, it looked like everything was going really fine, and then, you know, out of nowhere, we just, we ended up dropping a player. So, I thought the easiest way to go about this would give you kind of a time frame, and, and, and it went all the way back before we even moved into the house. Um, there were obviously some complications going on, and, and Joey just didn't really feel the same. If you watched his video that he posted, I think yesterday, the day before, he talked about how he kind of had, like, just a rough patch, I think he called it an attitude, but it, it was almost to the point where we felt like it was, it was a depressive state. To the point, and we wanted to help him really bad. We tried multiple times. I know I saw a lot of tweets yesterday. I actually got really mad looking at Twitter yesterday and, and went off on somebody. Dude, I apologize. I got, I got super mad. Yesterday. Yeah, I apologize to the kid that I went off on, but I, I just couldn't take it anymore because. But then I, you know, I started to realize that you guys don't see everything, so I don't expect you to understand until we came out with the video. So that that's fine. So I apologize to uh, to Beasley there, but yeah, one second to cut you yeah, off real quick before we get into this kind of time frame of how everything happened. We want you guys to know that we don't just drop a player who we've been teaming with for three years, who's been in the organization, who been, we've been really good friends with. Joey's the first person I ever went pro with, and I'll always consider him a friend. We don't just do these things for no reason. Uh, you guys think that we don't really have insight as to the decisions that we're making, and that's kind of the issue is that the, the behind the scenes, in the house, real life, that's something that we keep separated from YouTube and streaming that you don't see. So. It didn't just happen for no reason. We're gonna give you guys the reasons. We're gonna present them in a, in a formal manner so that you guys can make a decision on if you thought this was a good or bad idea. And, and typically we don't make these kinds of videos. We didn't make this video when when, uh, when we decided to drop uh, J-Cap and then when we decided to drop Rambo. Uh, okay, well, but we don't make these videos, right? It's, it's, it's something that we try to keep, you know, inside of, uh, of the team because it's, it's team talk and, and I know that a lot of you, like the 99% of you will, will always respect the fact that there are things that are handled within team and don't necessarily have to be in the public side. So, so you can keep going. Right, yeah. As they were saying, we don't want to divulge into people's personal lives. It's not fair to Joey. It's not fair to anybody. So, but moving into the house, we thought when we got confirmation, like I said, it was, it was before we even moved into the house. It's been going on for, for four to five months. So people who were tweeting saying that, you know, it's happened you know, overnight, that, that's really not the case. We just can't show everything like, like Matt said on YouTube, streaming, you know, we're not gonna go into that. We're not the, the freaking real world. We're not showing everybody our, our in-house problems. But we thought when we got confirmation to move into the house that that was gonna be a fix. We were gonna be here, we we're gonna be able to focus exclusively on Call of Duty, all of these outside phenomena we wouldn't have to worry about. And, and it actually just ended up making it worse. Ever since we moved into the house, you know, we, we've had multiple talks with Joey. I also saw tweets saying, you know, why, why wouldn't you help? Why wouldn't you help your friend? We, we tried over and over again. And every time we would have these talks, I'd say group talks that were probably four or five, and then I know Matt's gonna talk about some of the individual one-on-one -on -one talks he had with Joe. But every time we would have these talks, it would seem like everything was gonna get better until literally the next day, within 24 hours. And it got to the point leading up to like Geekfinity where Joey was, kind of like shutting off his streams without saying anything to anyone, kind of leaving his fans sitting there hanging, and, and we're telling him, we're like, man, you know, it's kind of funny at first, but, but that's really, that's hurting our brand, that's hurting you as a player, and, and people are wondering, your fans are wondering, you know, like, why they're stranded out there. And he understood that, he got that, so after Gfinity, uh, you know, he went back home to visit a little bit, and he came back, and, and the last talk we really had was, uh, was, was last week. And we sat down and we were trying to figure it out. Again, like I said, we've been going through this same problem for months and months and months. And it got to the point where October was coming up, we have a lot of tournaments. We needed this negative attitude out of the house. So we asked him, we're like, Joey, what can we do to help you? And he said nothing. Joey said there was nothing that we could do to help him out. He said that he was sad. Uh, we asked him why he was sad. He said he didn't know. He said being in the house, uh, he didn't enjoy it. He didn't enjoy it since he moved in. He said that's why he was actually going home early 
was because that he was miserable in the house, and, and we didn't know what to do. We kept asking. We didn't know how to make it better, and it got to the point, and really, like, the final nail in the coffin for me was, was you know, you, I've, you know, I've been teaming with Joey for over three years now, and, and me, I've always considered Joe a good friend, and me and Joey have done things that we'll probably take to the grave with us, to be honest. Like, we'll never tell other people. And, um, you know, whenever me and Matt left the room after that meeting that day, he ended up saying that, uh, that he didn't consider uh, myself and Matt to be, to be a friend of his, that I, was just, that I was just a teammate. So I was kind of taken back by that, obviously. That was right before uh, I went, went to visit home. And, um, yeah, once, I mean, once that happened, if, if you listen to what we preach, for the past few years, it, it's that you need to get along inside and outside the game. That's how you build a successful team. That's how you build a successful organization, and that's how you keep. That's how you live with somebody. When you're with somebody 24/7, obviously you've got to get along with them. So, I mean, once I heard that, uh, I think he ended up going and saying that he he like enjoyed Jacob and Proofy more than anybody else in the house. So, I mean, to say that when you're living with people and after after three years, multiple championships, like I said, going through a lot of uh, a fun times with Joe. I was taken back by it, and I mean, how would you respond to someone like that? I don't, I don't know how to, I've never been in that situation. I don't know how to deal with that situation. And for him to say there's nothing that we can do to help him, that's, I mean, we exhausted all of our other options. And we were pretty oblivious to that at that point. Uh, we, we thought everything was fine. You know, obviously there were days where Joey just didn't seem like himself, and that's kind of been that way since he moved into the house. You know, the Joey that I knew when I was teaming with him in 2010, you know, was lively, excited, and just, you know, he was just stoked on life. And then coming into the house and that conversation that we had with him about a week ago, literally the exact conversation with him was, Joey, like, what's up, man? Like, we can tell something's wrong, something's going on. You can talk to us. We're your friends. He's just like, I'm just sad. And we asked him, well, well, why are you sad? I mean, this conversation literally went on for 30 minutes. Asked him, why are you sad? He's like, I, I don't know. And I said, well, what can we do to help? Nothing. And I said, well, are you sad when you're at home? Are you sad when you're at school with your girlfriend? He's like, no. It's casually just said no. And I asked him, whoops, well, that doesn't make any sense. So you're sad when you're at the house, but you're not sad when you're at home. He said, yeah. So basically, we knew that we were the problem. And then when we found out later that day, when he told Seth and Hector that he didn't consider Will and I friends, even though I've had multiple conversations with him on a personal level about the house and about dealing with everything that we deal with and about de dealing with YouTube and Twitch and competing while trying to entertain people, uh, we just knew that it, it had to go somewhere. It, we had to make a change and it had to be done because when someone's sitting there telling you that he's sad being here, like he doesn't enjoy it and he enjoys being at home, but then he tells us he doesn't want to leave the house. It didn't make much sense to us. It didn't click. And it just, yeah, I had no idea what to, to do with the situation. So, you know, we had, we had to remove him from the team so that we can continue on and try and win a championship. We have five major tournaments in October. And if we're all not on the same page mentally, then there's no way you're going to win. Chemistry and communication is a huge thing in Call of Duty. And if you don't have those two things, you're not going to find success. Now, Joey... Joey is somebody who kind of struggled with dealing with not getting the same amount of views as Seth or I, or not getting the same amount of views as other big YouTubers. And this is something that I've actually talked to him personally about uh, multiple times. You know, we've had conversations at two in the morning about uh, him not getting the same amount of views as Seth and I, and, and just it's not going as well as him as it is for us. But one thing that I think it was hard for him to realize is that I've been doing this since 2010. You know, I went through two years of getting like five to 10,000 views a video. I went through an entire year of getting like 5,000 views, like a video, and then just trying to figure out where I go from here. You know, I'm trying to make a career out of this and it, it just wasn't working out. But that for me was motivating. That for me was something that I wanted to strive to do better. I wanted to get more views. I wanted to entertain everybody. And it just like, when I saw everybody getting bigger than me and getting more views and just being more popular, that's not, that lit a fire under my ass, and you guys know that. I've told you that multiple times. But for Joey, since he was living in the house and he was in that atmosphere all the time, he was just really, really discouraged by it. And he just wanted to know, well, why isn't it happening for me like it is for you guys? Why am I not getting this? Why? And it was just for him, in my opinion, it's something that he didn't really want to work towards. You know, He told us that, I asked him, why aren't you streaming? He said, I'm bored. I don't want to stream. Uh, it, just, it just seemed like... He expected it to just happen because he was winning championships. You know, Modern Warfare 3, when Optic Gaming was the most dominant team on the scene, and they basically won every single tournament, 
uh, he thought that that was going to make him big. He thought that that was going to get him more followers and, and more subscribers. And it did. If you go look at his Twitter account, he's got over 100,000 subscribers. He still and has you, a lot. And if you go look at his YouTube channel, his, his, his videos do extremely well. He gets around thirty to 40,000 views a video. And when he was live streaming, he was getting around two to three or four K views. And it, when we weren't streaming, uh, at one point he had eight or nine thousand views. The, the the problem I think was, and it's tough, right? Because uh, as he said it before we moved in, he's like, he's like, it's gonna be tough for me because I'm gonna be moving into the house with two superstars, right? Obviously referring to to Matt and and uh, not you, and to Matt and, and Seth, right? Um, <laughs> And I said, why, man? You know, it, it's, you know, Matt has gone through like the toughest path, right? Because at that point, we weren't what we are right now, right? It's it's a lot easier for for everybody else that's in the organization to get bigger because there's more exposure to them. We're in the same room, we're in the same house. To me, the whole thing, and uh, I mean, I don't know if we want to break the rotation, but to me, the 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 problem was just worry, right? I, I've never want to make that decision based on performances, based on, you know, on, on in-game, you know, mishaps, right? I, I've never done that. Losses, I take losses like I take my wins, right? It's it's part of the game. Uh, to me, I was more worried about him, right? Uh, I, I, I tried to talk to him as many times as I could. Every single time that we did something, we invited him. Like, when for, for the one week, right, that, that we played Minecraft together, the first thing we did was it was just me and, and, and Big Time first. When he saw that me, the big timer, and I were fucking having fun on Minecraft, this guy decided to jump in, and they're like, "I never thought I'd like Minecraft," and I started playing with them, and yeah. I had a blast. Well, whatever. It, like we 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 looked over at Joe, and they're like, "Joe, come play with us," and and he said something to me that that struck me, but I didn't say anything because you know whatever. Uh, and now I understand it a little bit more, right? But he said, "No, nah, that's your thing." And then at first I was like, "All right, well maybe he doesn't like Minecraft," but that's not what he meant. Now realizing. You know, after after having conversations with him about him not being happy here, about him, you know, about re, you know receiving messages from people that are close to him saying I'm worried about him, I became worried myself. And and I should have seen when he said, "That's your thing." I should have been like, "We're a team. Like, like, my thing is your thing." Well, you know, the, well, although that's very true, I just want to make sure that you guys know. I, I I don't mean to cut Hector off. We I've had so many personal talks with Joey about you know dealing with this and dealing with feeling excluded and trying to like conquer that in his own mind like hey you're a friend we're not excluding you to be honest with you Joe you just need, you need to get past that man we consider you a, a, a family we've been teaming with Optic Gaming for three years we were the first Optic Gaming pro team I just don't understand like how what he was going through and we tried to help him you know I've been getting a lot of tweets and a lot of comments on YouTube that you didn't help a friend you didn't help somebody who you considered family? Well, that's not the case at all. Uh, that, that was something that was left out of Joey's video that I've, I've talked to him multiple times. I even, for hours. I even talked to him. Like, at the gym and stuff, I was his gym buddy. We had talks all the time, and it just always led to the same things, and it was just sad to hear it from Joey himself. And he basically, he basically was saying that he thought Matt and Will had like an alliance against him, and he said in his video yesterday that he he makes things up in his head and he plays himself out as an enemy. As I think that's something along the lines of what he said. And in reality, he could have played Minecraft with them whenever he wanted. And it's sad that he thought in his head that he like strictly could not join them because that's exactly what he thought. Like he could not play with them. Like and, and, you know, speed of the gym, right? Like. There was times when Seth went home for that for those two to three weeks. Oh my God. That let me talk about that. <laughs> Fucking, I was okay. So when we first moved into the house, guys, I was I was an absolute wreck. I have grown to the house like no other. I absolutely love it here now. I consider this a home. But the first couple weeks, especially since I never had a college experience, I was literally a mental wreck. Like I hated being here. I hated everything about it. I didn't want to work, I just didn't want to do anything because I felt unnatural. I wasn't at my home, I wasn't where I've been for you know my whole life. So it was really weird for me and I'm so glad that I've grown on to the fact that this is really an opportunity that people would you know kill for. It is really an opportunity that is so amazing and so great. And I didn't realize that until just recently whenever I came back from my visit. Uh, from home again because I went back again and 
it really is an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime, and it really is a blessing. And I love it here now, and it's great that I can have this opportunity to work here. So I'm glad right. that I sort of got all that. So on that, like, when Seth was home, these guys would go to the gym. I would be upstairs typing an email, and they would say, Joe, you want to go to the gym? And he would say, no, that's your thing. I'll go by myself. Like, it, it, was, it was the small things that, that I should have caught on to, but, you know, I, I, I've always been in this house, and, and I preach this daily. We are dudes. We, if there's a problem, we talk about it. We don't, we, we're not going to be like, hey, not going to pussyfoot around. No, there. right. And, and, and that's something that, that I talk to Joe so many times about, like, like, bro, please let me know what the problem is. We'll work through it like we work through everything else. And when I'm getting messages from, from his girlfriend saying, I'm worried, uh, you know, I, 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 I've never heard him talk like that. Uh, <laughs> what is the line there? Get out of here. Of course oh, I hit it. Yo, you smacked the hell out. <laughs> All right. No, but. It's inhumane, though. No, it's not. Uh, so, like, when I'm getting messages from, from his girlfriend says, like, I'm worried about him. I've never heard him talk like that. Like, immediately I get worried because I, I'm. I'm not, I don't want to call myself the daddy, right? But I'm, I'm older, I, I, I have more experience, I know what type of damage mental instability can cause for somebody. Depression is nothing to fucking joke about. I wouldn't about. even call it mental instability, I would call it stress. Well, yeah, I mean, that is, that's, that's you that's being not mentally there. Because there's no, there's no physical, there was nothing physical going on. There was like, no, he wasn't being abused or anything. It was all mental, right? And I try to talk it, I, I try to talk him through it, I try to try, try to talk him out of it. But when he's not talking to me and he's talking to like somebody else, and, and, and that somebody else tells me, he's like, I'm worried, I'm gonna be fucking worried, you know? Because that's true. Because at, the last thing I want is somebody to be in a position to where they're just fucking stressed out of their minds, right? Uh, you know, being homesick is something that, that like we talked and talked with him for three days. So we're like, bro, go home, come back, you'll feel refreshed. And, and he did. Uh, unfortunately for, for Joey, who, who I care about a lot, you know, it, it's, it, I, I saw, you know, we saw no, like working with him and working with him, talking to him just never helped. And I'm not going to keep some, somebody around that's just going to be putting himself in harm's way by fucking staying somewhere where he is not happy. And that, you know, that's, that's, that's only part of the reason, guys. So the only reason we're making this video is because we want you guys to understand that it hurts for us to, to have to do this, right? To have to make that decision to do that. We love our team. We love our chemistry. We love who we are so much that we didn't go out and, and say, all right, we're going to try to sneakily talk to Clayster, sneakily try to talk to uh, Krim or uh, uh, Killa or somebody else. We knew that if we brought something back, someone back, it was going to have to be somebody that that knows what Optic is, what the family of Optic is. And the person that was gonna fulfill Joe's role was gonna be J-Cap. And J-Cap plays the exact same role. He's won multiple championships with Big Time. He's won multiple championships under the Optic Gaming organization. Uh, but before we go on to talking a little bit more about the player that we did pick up, I think one of the things that we all wanted to talk about before we end this video, and I, th I think I speak for Big Timer and Scum, is that there's some, kind of a misconception that Merck is more dedicated to playing Call of Duty and to winning than us. And that's something that kind of bothers each one of us personally because there was one week where, there's been multiple weeks actually, where Skunk and Merck were both out of the house and Big Timer and I were the only ones here and we were the only ones you know, trying to work on our channels and trying to work on our, our Twitch TV live streaming. And I know it's easier for me because I live in Illinois and this is where I'm home. My, my parents, or my dad is 40 minutes away as long as with my grandparents and everything like that. And I'm really bad with visiting because I'm always here streaming and I'm always here making a video or something like that. But if, if you were to go back and you were to look at it statistically, if you look at our gamer profiles, Scuff and I probably have the most time played on Call of Duty, that probably more than anybody in the Call of Duty community. Uh, just because we're not practicing playing scrims and, and playing aids and stuff like that doesn't mean we're not playing Call of Duty. Big and timer. It should also be understood that you know, after after Gfinity, like Matt said, Seth and, and Joe were going home, which was fine. I mean, we had almost three yeah, months until our next tournament. We're not, I mean, we're not mad about that or anything. But we, we were in the house for, we were all four back in the house, like, last week for, for one week. And that's when, um, that's when people are, are drawing all these conclusions that, like, Joey's grinding COD when you're on Minecraft. It should be known that everyone in the house, including Joey, last week said that we should not scrimmage. We should not play Call of Duty. Where are you going? Give me water. Oh. Yeah, it, it was agreed upon all of us, including Joey, that we should not play Call of Duty because him and I were going home this past weekend and it would take five or six days break. We would lose all the progress we made in that previous four or five days. So we didn't need to play Call of Duty. Obviously, you have these, like, the new pro point system. We, we've made a video about that. I don't want to go into it. There's 2v2 tournaments and stuff. But 
we still have time to grind Call of Duty, and we're still going to do it. That one week doesn't define someone's drive to win over the past four years. And I see a lot of people even tweeting like, oh, you guys bet past success, you'll be fine. Like, I appreciate the support, but we don't need that as a crutch. We're going to be fine. We're still going to win more tournaments. I don't need to hear about how much we won in Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 1. We're still going to win tournaments. And it should just be known that we all agreed that we were not going to scrim in that one week. Yeah. And that we're still going to beat people's ass. And just because you play for one week and your teammates aren't playing, doesn't mean you want to win more than the other three. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was one thing that bothered us personally. Scump, Scump actually took that to heart. You know, he, he struggled with that because people are just telling us that Joey's the backboard of the team. Joey wants to win. And I, uh, Joey, Joey's the captain of the team. And that's perfectly fine. And, you know, I, I don't mean to sound like we're bashing Joey when we talk about these things. But we all want to win just as bad as him. And we've all put our time into Call of Duty. And we spent, we, put, we paid our dues, and we're, we're, just, we're here just as much as him, trying to win. So that's one of the misconceptions that we wanted to get out of the way. Just because we're playing Minecraft, you know, two or three days uh, for a couple hours out of the week, doesn't mean that we don't want to win. We want a championship, we have the drive, we have the motivation, and that's why we parted ways with Murphy, so that we could show you guys that we want to win. Like, we're here, it's gonna happen. You, I mean, you guys think that we're just sitting over here, you know, just playing Minecraft, you know, just living life casually, that we don't care about anything. We want to win. And we've said it multiple times. And I don't know how many times we're going to have to say it. it obviously, we're going to have to prove it. But we're here to win. We have the drive, we have the motivation, and it's going to happen. And can I just reiterate the fact that our next tournament still, at this point right now, is not for another month and a half. Like, we still have that much time to practice I don't understand why we've gotten so much flack for, you know, playing different games. Like Matt said, we have put in so many hours making videos every day, live streaming every day. We've put in so many hours of Call of Duty at this point. We know how to play the game. Like, we know the ins and outs. We know everything, basically, about Black Ops 2. Thousands of hours. We know how to play the game. Back to Phoenix it's just... We, Call of Duty is Call of Duty. Call of Duty will never change. You'll always have that natural instinct when you get it. It'll always be there. And the fact that we picked up a new teammate, that honestly reignites the fire under me to want to wanna scrim and just prove people wrong because that's something that I love doing. Right. All the people that doubt us, you know, I just want to oh. win. I mean, you guys think we're washed up. We don't okay. care. It, just to <laughs> Sorry. Re- no, no, no. no. I, I, are we yeah, saying we apologize for going on a rant? rant. I still have something to talk about as well. We apologize for going on a rant. Well, this get stuff, it over with. This stuff's just really important to us. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about, the other day I tweeted out something. This was not a pure, I put that word in there, pure skill evaluation. Obviously, you've heard all of the other reasons. And I, I also heard a lot of bullshit like, you guys aren't going to tell us the truth, like in this video. This is literally 100% truthful. This is everything that has happened from point A to point B. So, I mean, I want to get that out of the way, too, because that sort of grinds my grits. But I just want to talk about the past couple tournaments. Uh, obviously, Joey is a very good player. Joey is a great player. He's won multiple tournaments, multiple championships under the Optic Gaming organization. But the last couple tournaments, his performances have been iffy. I'm not going to say he played bad, uh, but his performance definitely hasn't been on par with how it's been for the rest of the season. Because I remember at Call of Duty Championships, Joey played freaking phenomenal. Joey did so well. He clutched so many rounds in SND. Like, that's the one thing that stands out to me about Call of Duty Champs is how many rounds that Joey clutched for us, uh, especially against Impact. That's that's uh, the team that I'm really thinking about. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not a pure skill evaluation, but skill definitely the past couple tournaments has had a little bit of an impact on our decision. We just feel like with JCAP, who has been – considered one of the best players in the Call of Duty franchise ever since Call, uh, Black Ops 1, is that if we just have a little bit of a AR slaying presence, just a little bit more, just that extra push who's going to put up more kills in hardpoint, uh, defend the flag a little bit better in, in capture the flag, it's going to help us pick up those maps and series that we really need to win. That's going to catapult us into the finals of, of every tournament, hopefully, yep. and help us win matches. I know, and to answer the question whether or not he's going to be moving into the house, he's got a couple of uh, health issues that he's got to get on the wraps, and and uh, we're going to try to get him out here as, as soon as possible. Uh, and, and we know that this video has gone long enough. So, you know, we just want to, I personally just want to have a closing statement that says, you know, Joe, I, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Uh, I, 
I, I, I was very concerned about, about you know, you, you being sad, uh, and, and I never want that for any, any of my teammates, any of my family, any of anyone. Uh, so when it, it hits close to home, I, it, 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 really, it really bothered me to, to, to a point where my fatherly instincts came in and, and you know, decided to, to, to have at least a conversation about whether or not it would be a good, you know, a, a good time to, to start looking for another player and, you know, make, make the decision that we made. But, again, bro, you're, you're one of my closest friends on, you know, from, from this side of things, and, and I, hope, uh, I hope I'm not saying it on one side of things. Um, so, you know, thanks for all the, all the good years. We wish you the best, Joe. We really do. Yeah. But sorry for the length of the video, guys. We just want to kind of set the record straight, set the story straight, Get if you will, just yeah. so that you guys know what really happened. So thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. And we hope that you guys continue to support us just like you have in these past three years as a competitive team. You guys are the best fans in the world, best followers, and you supported us through thick and thin. So I'm sorry if this team decision kind of struck you the wrong way, but we had our reasons, and we are gonna go, we're going to go win a championship in October, and we're going to go strong in a Call of Duty Ghost. All right, guys. Thanks.